For decades, Linux has been described with the same familiar explanations. People say Linux is winning because it's free, because it's open source, because it's secure, because it runs servers, or because developers love it. Those reasons are repeated so often that they've almost become background noise. They sound logical, even obvious, but they don't really explain what's happening right now. They don't explain why Linux is quietly spreading into places it never dominated before, why entire industries rely on it without talking about it, or why many users switch to Linux and then never want to leave. The real reason Linux is winning is deeper, quieter, and far more human than most people realize. Linux isn't winning because it's cheaper or more powerful. Linux is winning because it aligns with how people actually want technology to behave in a world where trust, control, and longevity matter more than flashy features. To understand this, you have to look at how people's relationship with technology has changed. Years ago, computers felt like tools you owned. You bought a machine, installed software, and used it how you wanted. Over time, that relationship shifted. Operating systems became services instead of products. Updates stopped being optional. Interfaces changed without permission. Features appeared and disappeared. Telemetry increased. Accounts became mandatory. Hardware requirements crept upward. What once felt like ownership started to feel like permission. Many users didn't notice at first because the changes were gradual and often framed as progress. But slowly, a sense of unease developed. People began to feel that their computers were no longer fully theirs. Linux grew in the background during this shift. It didn't shout. It didn't chase trends. It didn't try to lock users into ecosystems. Instead, it quietly stayed consistent. When you install Linux, you're not agreeing to rent your computer. You're not entering a contract where the rules can change overnight. You're installing a system that assumes you are in charge. That single assumption, more than any technical feature, is the real reason Linux is winning. The idea of control might sound abstract, but it shows up in very practical ways. On Linux, updates happen when you decide you can see what's changing. You can delay them, skip them, or customize them. You don't wake up one morning to discover your workflow has been redesigned because a company decided it was time. This matters more than people admit as technology becomes central to work, education, and daily life. Stability becomes valuable. Linux offers a sense of calm in a world of constant digital disruption. Another part of Linux's quiet success comes from how it treats hardware. Modern operating systems increasingly assume you will replace your computer every few years. New versions demand more memory, more storage, and more processing power. Perfectly usable machines are declared obsolete, not because they stopped working, but because they no longer fit a company's upgrade strategy. Linux rejects this idea entirely. A 10-year-old laptop can feel fast and responsive with the right Linux distribution. Old machines find new purpose. Schools, small businesses, and individuals benefit from this without needing to make a political statement about it. Linux simply respects the hardware you already have. This respect extends to users themselves. Linux does not assume you are inexperienced, nor does it try to hide everything from you. At the same time, it doesn't force complexity on those who don't want it. You can use Linux casually, never touching a terminal, or you can dive deep and shape the system to your exact preferences. That choice is always yours. This flexibility creates trust. When people feel trusted, they become loyal. They don't feel manipulated or managed. They feel empowered. The open source nature of Linux plays a role here, but not in the way it's usually described. It's not just about code being visible. It's about accountability. When something goes wrong on Linux, the explanation is usually available. Bugs are documented. Fixes are discussed in public. Decisions are debated openly. Even if most users never read source code, they benefit from the culture surrounding it. Transparency creates resilience. It ensures that no single company can abandon the platform or radically change it without alternatives emerging. Linux doesn't belong to one corporation's quarterly goals. It belongs to an ecosystem that evolves slowly and deliberately. This is especially important in a time when trust in large technology companies is declining. That the breaches, privacy scandals, sudden policy changes, and forced migrations have made users cautious. Linux offers a quiet escape from that uncertainty. It doesn't promise perfection, but it promises honesty. What the system does is what it says it does. There are no hidden agendas baked into the core design. 
Another reason Linux is winning is that it has mastered the art of invisibility. Many people use Linux every day without knowing it. Their phones run Android, which is built on Linux. Their websites are hosted on Linux servers. Their smart TVs, routers, cars, and even household appliances rely on Linux. This widespread adoption isn't accidental. Linux succeeds because it's reliable, adaptable, and boring in the best possible way. It doesn't need constant attention. It just works. This invisibility changes perception. Linux is no longer seen only as a niche operating system for enthusiasts. It's seen as infrastructure. And infrastructure doesn't need hype. It needs stability. When companies choose Linux, they're not making an ideological choice. They're making a practical one. Linux reduces risk. It avoids vendor lock-in. It scales efficiently. It gives organizations the freedom to build systems that fit their needs rather than forcing their needs to fit the software. On the desktop, Linux's growth is slower but more meaningful. People who switch to Linux often do so after a breaking point. Maybe their system became sluggish after an update. Maybe an upgrade was forced. Maybe privacy concerns became too obvious to ignore. When they arrive on Linux, they often expect a compromise. They assume things will be harder, less polished, or more limited. What surprises them is not how much Linux lacks, but how much it respects them. Modern Linux desktops are refined, stable, and capable. They don't try to imitate other operating systems perfectly. Instead, they offer coherent design philosophies. Some prioritize simplicity, others customization, others performance. This diversity isn't fragmentation, it's choice. Users can select an environment that matches how they think and work. Over time, this creates a sense of belonging rather than dependency. The community aspect of Linux is another subtle advantage. When users seek help, they don't enter a support queue. They enter a conversation, forums, documentation, and discussions are driven by people who care about the system, not by scripts or sales goals. This creates a different tone. Problems are treated as shared challenges, not user errors. Knowledge is passed forward freely. That culture leaves a lasting impression. People remember being helped without being sold to. Linux is also winning because it adapts without losing its identity. It has embraced modern hardware, new display technologies, and evolving workflows without sacrificing core principles. Containerization, cloud computing, and edge devices all rely heavily on Linux because it can evolve while staying predictable. Developers trust it because it doesn't surprise them. Businesses trust it because it doesn't change direction abruptly. Even in gaming area once considered impossible for Linux, progress has been steady and practical. Compatibility layers and native support have transformed the experience. What's important here isn't raw numbers, but confidence. Users now believe that Linux gaming is viable. That belief alone shifts momentum. Once people believe a platform is capable, Adoption follows naturally. The real reason Linux is winning is not a single feature or advantage. It's a philosophy that has become increasingly relevant. In a world where software often feels intrusive, Linux feels respectful. In a world where technology changes constantly, Linux feels stable. In a world where users feel watched, Linux feels private. These qualities resonate deeply, even if users don't articulate them. Linux doesn't try to be everything to everyone. It doesn't chase trends or force engagement. It allows people to build relationships with their computers on their own terms. That quiet confidence is rare in modern technology. And it's powerful. As more people become aware of how their tools shape their lives, they start to value systems that align with their values. Linux doesn't need aggressive marketing because it grows through trust. One user recommends it to another. One organization adopts it quietly and never looks back. One old computer finds new life. These small moments add up. Linux is winning not because it's louder, flashier, or more popular in headlines. It's winning because it understands something fundamental. Technology should serve people, not manage them. And in a world that's finally starting to question who really controls their devices, that understanding makes all the difference.